Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the five ways to increase your chances of breaking into commercial banking and getting that first internship, that first job out of school, and even some of these topics are really relevant for people that are in the in the line of business already, but looking to switch jobs or maybe move up into different divisions. So let's jump into it. So the hiring landscape remains very competitive for finance jobs. You know, the salaries are high, the benefits are really good, and it's an interesting career to take. So how do you really increase the chances of you breaking in and getting that first job? So for students, a lot of universities and career development offices will recommend a lot of the general things that you'll hear in school or coming out of school. You know, attend the job fairs, go to the conferences, kind of meet the hiring managers managers and the HR representatives for the bank, make sure that you get known, um, you know, join student clubs that are relevant to the field of finance, whether it's an investment club or a finance club, get your CFA level one, make sure you do well in school, get those high GPAs up, uh, you know, maybe get an internship somewhere related to that field. It could be within the bank or related to finance and obviously invest time in touching up your resume and writing a targeted cover letter. And so all of those things are really relevant. I'm not saying you shouldn't do those, but in addition to that, because the reality is everyone is doing that already. What else can you do beyond that to really stand out and increase your chances? And so these five tips are really going to focus on that. So the first one I would really recommend is gaining customer or sales experience. So commercial banking is a very customer facing role, meaning that, you know, entry level employees will either be expected to attend meetings or at least interface with business owners in some capacity, asking questions, you know, writing emails, writing professional emails, uh, you know, picking up the phone and calling them, asking them for their financial information. So, you know, the communication skills and the ability to sell are primary areas of consideration for any hiring manager. Can you communicate professionally? Have you ever called and spoken to a customer in a professional setting, asked someone to selling them something, or you know, really have the confidence to be in that room and speaking with someone? So, you know, a lot of kind of entry level people going into the sector, if you really struggle to communicate and you're not confident enough, that's going to show and that's going to unfortunately reflect poorly on you because again, this is a customer facing client facing division. It's different than if you're working in the back office or in the middle office of a bank. If you're in commercial banking, you will interface even as an analyst, you may come to those meetings. Even as an intern, you may attend those meetings as well. So, you know, communication and sales experience is critical. So while there is the financial modeling and being able to build the financial models, all of those things can be taught on the job or you can get online certificates and watch videos. But communication and that, you know, willingness and ability to sell is something that unfortunately it takes a lot longer to develop and sometimes it can't be developed. So, you know, having previous experiences that demonstrate that ability is critical to standing out and is a key area that a lot of people will look at and say, that's good. You know, that's, that's really relevant to this job. And so, you know, my recommendation is focus on gaining internships or job experiences that are customer facing. And it doesn't have to be in finance, funny enough. You can be a sales associate at a retail store dealing directly, you know, with customers, door-to-door -door sales, you know, selling, you know, charitable donations or whatever the case is, working as a customer service rep at a bank branch, something I always recommend because at least there, you know, it is kind of finance related. You know, you learn the products, you understand kind of Kind of the basics of finance and business and you're obviously dealing with business owners or you know if, if it's not that you know working in restaurants you know dealing with bad customers dealing with you know whether you're a manager at that location or a server you know you're interfacing with people so the ability to hold the conversation be professional and presentable all of those experiences really feed into that and so those are really good relevant experiences to gain and so when you're going into these interviews, make sure to highlight that and say, listen, you know, maybe I don't have a finance experience, but I've dealt with X, Y, and Z. You know, I've spoken with business owners when I've served them and asked about, you know, what they do or, you know, whatever the case is. And being able to hold that conversation both in an interview and dem demonstrating path past experience is all very good. And then as well, maybe you've worked in a small business. So maybe you've already, you know, whether you're working for your parents' business or, you know, smaller businesses, a lot of the times they're always looking for hands-on help to pick up the phone and collect AR, you know, pay the payables, um, you know, just deal with inside sales and customers. So again, it may not be related to finance, but you're at least interfacing in a B2B, you know, business-to-business -business environment. Now, the second one is applying to different types of lenders. 
So not all banks are the same, and commercial banking is a very broad term. You know, it relates to lending type jobs. It could be real estate lending, equipment lending, um, cash flow, M and A lending. It could be private personal business loans, residential mortgages, commercial. You know, so there's a broad subsets of different types of commercial lending opportunities. And so you know. The reality is when you're in school or you're just breaking into the sector, you kind of laser focus in on the big banks, right? Because they're the most visible. Obviously, their brands are well known. So you're like, well, I want to apply to the big banks. But the problem with that is that usually the big banks offer the highest salaries and the best benefits for a reason. They're the biggest ones. But that also attracts the most job applicants. So if you find that you're not having really good traction with the bigger banks, you know, set your sights down to maybe that second tier or to regional banks or to, you know, credit unions or to different types of like specialized lenders you know at the end of the day you know the principles and the learnings on that job are very relevant to eventually getting to the big banks but you know you can use that job as a stepping stone so don't always try to just go for the big banks look for those secondary opportunities and I already kind of highlighted this but you know I kind of put them in different buckets there's the credit unions which are like the banks but not as broad in terms of the products that they offer there's equipment financing companies where they're highly specialized only on equipment opportunities it's more volume based, but still, you know, the fundamentals are the same. There's regional banks or tier two lending institutions. So typically higher cost of capital, riskier lending. In a way, it's actually more interesting because you're working with the non-bankable clients that have unique situations. And then maybe there's also number four, where it's just more traditional mortgage uh, financing on the residential commercial side. But all of these, you know, different lending institutions ultimately will allow you to put relevant work experience in the commercial banking world on your resume, allowing you to then use that as a stepping stone to where you ultimately want to go, which may be the big banks, and maybe from there you move on to the next division and the next division. So from a summer analyst perspective, I would recommend that, you know, especially the big banks, they typically, you know, there are those rotational programs and summer programs, but those are super competitive. So, you know, the less tracked area of the marketplace is applying for summer roles at these smaller institutions, just being a data entry or data analyst. And, you know, maybe you're not going to do any loans, but that's not the point. You just want to put something that's relevant on there. But the flip side, and I've already said this, is that, you know, expect that the pay is going to be a little lower. Maybe you're only going to be working minimum wage or maybe just a a slight premium. So your friends and your colleagues that are going to the bigger banks, yeah, they're going to make a little bit more spending money for after the summer, but that's not relevant. You know, the the name of the game is to gain experience so that after you graduate school or eventually in the middle of your career, you're actually getting into those big banks. So the third tip I would say is focusing on applying to different divisions within the bank. So I I talked about applying to different lenders, but maybe, you know, you have the opportunity to break into the bank, but you want to go after the top tier stuff, the big deals, you know, and ultimately the big deals attract the most people. Again, the compensation is typically higher because you're working on more profitable loans. It's much more attractive and just in general sexy to work on these bigger financing opportunities, but that naturally, again, attracts competition. So if the name of the game is to get experience, then if everyone's going left, you go right and look for other opportunities. And so when I was in school, I never really appreciated the the segmentation within the banks. You know, I call it the financing ladder, and that's why I kind of put this ladder over here. You know, there are different tiers of commercial banking, and they're typically segmented in terms of size, right? The size of the loan. If you're focused on ultra small business, micro cap or personal loans, you know, you're at the branch level and you're doing maybe sub $100,000 deals. Maybe you're doing small business banking, which is sub a million dollar deals or lower mid market, which is one to 25 million or mid market 25 to 60 or national accounts 40 to 250, which I kind of call upper mid market and then corporate banking 250 plus, you know, in the billions of dollars. And so most of the time you hear about corporate banking on Wall Street Oasis and all these, you know, websites. But the reality is commercial banking extends far beyond that. And the reality is the volume of business in these lower tiers is very high. And the opportunity to get higher here, hired in these divisions is actually higher for you as well. Because everyone wants to go after the big deals. 
So my recommendation is if you're not getting a lot of traction at the national accounts level or the corporate banking, well, set your sights a little lower. You know, go to the lower mid-market side or the small business banking side. Get in. You still get to work on, you know, similar fundamental type deals, which is I'm lending money. I'm analyzing the company. Can they borrow the money? Can they pay it back? Making those types of credit judgment decisions and being in that environment. And then once you're in the bank, you can move up. And I've seen this. I've seen people graduate from small business banking to lower mid-market and then lower mid-market to mid-market and then mid-market to national accounts. And I actually, one of my colleagues that I started at the bank with, you know, seven years down the line, we both started at lower mid-market. I kind of went down the M&A path, but, you know, he stayed within the bank, then did a lateral move to another division. And now he is in corporate banking at the highest tier. So he hopscotched (laughs) essentially three tiers to the top tier. And that was what his goal was. But because he was in the bank, because he developed that internal network, his opportunity and the chances of getting those promotions were significantly higher. And that's why I was able to move that up. So ultimately, big deals attract more applicants. So set your sights a little lower, get into the bank. The name of the game is to get that experience and then move up. And then ultimately, that may be a better opportunity. So I've kind of already talked about this top part. So you can pause the video and read that. But the bottom part, I also want to highlight this. So the second area, and I kind of, it's like 3.2, tip 3.2, is um, is regional hiring. So I was talking to, um, you know, actually a perspective, a, a viewer of, of the channel, and they reached out on LinkedIn, and they were saying, hey, listen, I'm having trouble breaking in. I got great experience, um, you know, and I'm not even applying to the big areas. Like, I just want to get into kind of mid-market banking. And so, you know, I kind of highlighted, okay, where are you applying to? Well, I'm applying to, you know, Toronto, like the core of the city. I want to work in the head office of the of the National Bank, you know, and kind of really work there. And one of the things I said is, listen, the reality is, you know, commercial bankers hire regionally, right? You know, there's a director or SVP that runs an office. You know, they may run southwestern region, northwestern region, central region, downtown region. And so, you know, if you're going to the downtown core or the main markets, again, the volume of applicants is typically higher because everyone wants to work there. So if you want your increase your chances of breaking in, look to the regional markets, look to the tertiary markets, where again, there are regional managers that are looking to hire relationship managers and analysts and credit analysts and, you know, junior accounts managers. And so, you know, the, you know, if, if you really want to just get into the bank first and get that first main step, because again, your chances of moving up once you're in it are significantly higher, will go regionally to another division or to another group and look and say, hey, you know what, I'm comfortable with an hour commute, or maybe I'm going to, you know, I'm young, I don't really have any commitments, maybe I'll move two hours away from where I grew up, get some experience there, and then move laterally back closer to home once once I'm already in the bank. So it's not only about applying to different divisions, but it also could be different regions. And so that may be a different approach to use. Now, tip number four is direct LinkedIn networking. And so you know, while there's always this suggestion, hey, you got to attend the conferences and the job fairs and gain exposure to the hiring managers, you know, again, everyone is doing that. So how do you stand out in a one to one environment, and you know, really are able to share your story and be heard? Because the reality is, I'll be honest with you, you go to these conferences, and you go to these networking events, and there's 60 students that form a ring around you, all asking you, peppering you with questions. It's like you're almost like you're an athlete at the end of a, of a game. You know, all these reporters are asking these questions. And it's, it's very difficult for you to actually connect with someone and say, hey, I remember you. You know, you asked really good questions because maybe you'll get one or two questions in. So, you know, the, 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 really the challenge is how do you kind of move away from that environment and go one-to-one? And what I found to be really successful, and this is what I always recommend people do when they reach out to me, is, hey, you know, just focus on reaching out to the people that are making these hiring decisions, get in front of those banking managers, and ultimately just be present and available. Because a lot of the time, you know, what ends up happening is an analyst leaves or a relationship manager leaves. It's not like business stops. You know, that that hiring manager that's running that regional commercial banking office needs to fill that role as quickly as they can. So I kind of call it just-in-time hiring. You know, like you have to, you know, I got to fill that role. Like funny enough, that's how I broke into the sector. I met a regional manager. I didn't do it over LinkedIn. I was introduced to that person. Really good guy. We hit it off, you know, and I was like, this is what I want to do. Like, this is really interesting to me. And he's like, oh, great. You know, let's keep in touch. And, and four months later, he hits me up and he's like, listen, like Robert, like there's an opportunity. Uh, one of my, one of my analysts left, why don't you come in and, you know, just, you know, fill, fill that role. And then I can give you the opportunity to kind of 
get a client book and move on and I'll do all that kind of stuff. And I was like, perfect, I'll do it. Funny enough, regionally, it was about 50 minutes away from where I lived, but I jumped on the opportunity because I got into the bank. I got into a good group and I was a just in time hire. So what? You, so really from a chances perspective, instead of applying for just traditionally the jobs that you see online or on LinkedIn, you know, again, that is just a bloodbath. Like, you know, it's, 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 it's a roll of the dice whether you're going to stand out or not. If you want to increase your chances, go directly to the hiring manager. So the best way to do it is on LinkedIn. Make sure you have a professional profile, a nice headshot. Make sure at least, you know, you, you detail kind of the job opportunities you have there. Sometimes I reach out and, you know, people don't have a profile photo and they, they don't even put any information on the LinkedIn profile and they want to connect. And it's like, I don't know who you are. Like I'm using your LinkedIn profile to judge you, right? So, you know, make sure you have a good profile. And if you invest in that, then reach out to either the directors, the senior managers, the managers of these regional offices. And, you know, you'll see their titles. You know, you can type in Bank of America, Director, Commercial Banking, and then your region, X, you know, New York or Philadelphia or whatever the case is. And, you know, that will pop up, you know, on your Google search, a bunch of LinkedIn profiles. You click in and you kind of read their description and they may say, I run a regional office with 15 people, you know, covering mid-market banking, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, what we are focused on lending. That's the type of person that you want to reach out to. You know, some mistake that people make is they go too high. They reach out to all the big executives, the SVPs and the VPs of the or the division leaders. And, and they're not looking for just-in-time hires. You know, they typically are say, oh, great, you know, th- thanks for being interested in the bank. You know, go apply through our HR division. You don't want that. You want to go straight to the person that typically is picking up the phone and saying, hey, HR, someone just left. I need to fill a role here. And so they'll pick up the phone and do that, but they'll also look through their own personal network and try to fill that role themselves. So that's why you want to be in front of those people. And so, you know, once you've done that, you know, you've identified those people, reach out and, you know, just have a simple, very, very simple message and use, I always say, use the student card. If you're a student in school, you know, you're, it's very unassuming to just pick up, you know, send a message and say, hey, listen, you know, I'm a fourth year student. I'm really interested in business and financing. You know, this commercial banking music really intrigues me. Uh, I'd love to just, you know, have a quick call or coffee chat and just learn more about what you do. And then, you know, usually the response rate on that is, is pretty good because again, you're a student, you're not immediately stretching out your hand and saying, Hey, I'm looking for a job. You're more just unassuming and saying, Hey, I'm looking to learn. And once you're present in front of those people and hopefully you're professional enough that, you know, they walk away and think, Oh, you know, that's a good person. I'll keep in touch with them. Um, you know, eventually, you know, that opportunity may come up and they pick up the phone and reach out to you. So, you know, you want to be in front of these hiring managers and worst case, you know, what you can do is, hey, listen, you know, you apply to an online role and, and you pick up the phone and you say, hey, John, you know, we met a few months ago, appreciate the coffee and, and you know, the chat and sharing kind of your perspective on the bank. I really want to work for your bank and I just applied for this role. You know, any tips, recommendations? And maybe they can offer a recommendation or you can put their name on, on that job application and say, hey, listen, I spoke to John X and, you know, he says that, you know, I would be a really good fit for the bank, blah, blah, blah. So leverage your direct connections to increase your chances of getting those jobs. And then the last tip I would say is entrepreneurship experience. So the, the, the funny part is commercial bankers are speaking with business owners and entrepreneurs on a daily basis. So having the entrepreneurial experiences will A, allow you to connect better with the bank's customers and is a great differentiator because it demonstrates you have the initiative and the hustle and those kind of key drivers to say, hey, listen, I'm a go-getter. You know, I started this little landscaping business or tutoring business, or I started a a Shopify site online, and I have this interest for business. I have the ability to understand how money works, how to sell something, how to buy something, managing suppliers and customer complaints. So any sort of entrepreneurial experience is a huge differentiator for you. And so it doesn't have to be complex. You don't have to build a billion dollar company. It could be a summer landscaping business. You know, you and a few friends start it together. You rent some equipment, you know, and you do this for four or five months and, you know, you make 10,000 bucks in that summer. You know, it gives you the understanding of how to rent equipment, how to finance that. You know, did you have capital? Did you use credit cards? You know, so all of these things, they're relevant to commercial banking. And so when you're in that interview room and you're talking about that experience, well, all of a sudden, you know, these, you know, this hire manager can be like, wow, you know, like you get it. Like, and, and, and the funny part is a lot of these commercial bankers are kind of, I call them midnight entrepreneurs because, you know, I was, I was like that, you know, when I was at the bank, you know, I would look at all these clients that were, were running these businesses. And I'm like, man, I really want to be a business owner. 
and that's that's why I got into M and A because I'm getting closer and closer to you know the, the the opportunity of business ownership. And so you know f- for a lot of these commercial bankers, when you already have that entrepreneurial experience, it's a sign of respect. It helps you stand out. It communicates a ton of positive things about who you are. And then as well, when you're in front of business clients, you're able to say, "Oh yeah, I get that." You know, I ran a landscaping business when I was in school, and you know that even with a client, you can connect a lot better and probably sell better. So ultimately, this is a huge differentiator if you're applying for commercial lending opportunities. So th- that's, a, that's a quick summary of kind of the, uh, the five tips that I would say. You know, if you can focus on sales customer experience, that's really relevant. Financial modeling, again, it's good to know, but probably everyone knows it already that's applying for that job. So it's not going to really help you stand out. The second, focus on applying to different lenders. Don't just go to the main banks. Go to the secondary and tier twos, the specialized lenders. There's tons of guys out there that are are looking for hires. And so everyone's just going after the big shops. That's not the name of the game. Just get in, break in first, get that relevant experience, and then use it as a stepping stone. The third, maybe if you still want to go to that bank or you find that you 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 have the chance to, don't go after the big divisions, you know, focus on the lower divisions, small business banking, lower mid market, and break in there, work on those files, and then move up. And going beyond job fairs, number four, reach out to, over to LinkedIn, reach out to managers directly on LinkedIn, who are looking to fill roles on their team, and be an available just in high, just in time hire because that's probably going to increase your chance. And I'm, I'm, I'm an example of that. That's how I got my job in commercial banking. And then number five, if you have, if you have the initiative or, you know, your, your family owns a business, you know, those entrepreneurial experiences and entrepreneurial initiatives, those are things that bank, commercial bankers care about a lot more. Because again, you know, if you're applying investment banking, you know, you're not going to be talking to a lot of customers. It's more just financial modeling and pure data analysis skills. But in commercial banking, you're a lot more client facing very quickly in your career, talking to business owners, winning their trust and being able to hold a conversation. And if you started a business, that's a huge differentiator. So hopefully you guys liked the video. If you have any questions, please like and subscribe to the channel and comment below. Or you can also reach out over LinkedIn. And, you know, I'm happy to kind of connect with you guys and, you know, go from there. But if there's any other questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a great day, guys. Thank you.